Hi there, everyone. Welcome. I'm happy to have you here again. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss Quizlet, making vocabulary and concept sets on Quizlet, and playing various games. You will see that you will be able to use Quizlet uh, in the assessment, in the introduction, or even in the practice part of your lesson. So it's a very versatile tool. You can use it for everything. When you make an account, this is how your homepage is going to look like. You're going to have your recent vocabularies and then you're going to have what? Get started. You're going to have a library, folders, and classes. I deleted some folders so you can so we can make new ones. In the create, you can make a study set, a folder, and a class. So let's give it a go. First of all, I want to create a study set. Then we're going to organize it in a folder. And then we're going to make a task. After that, I'm going to show you all of the games that you can play. Here, of course, if you click, you have the night mode, which I always use. Why? Because I have a headache. And I think most people ever do have a headache so uh, from the computer. So I definitely use it here. Another thing that you have uh, here is blogs and you have uh, articles for teachers. Now, let's start. Create. A study set. Okay, so new, this is an auto save set. Yeah, sometimes it also saves. Harry Potter vocabulary. I'm just going to leave this one and continue. First of all, here you need to write a title. Mm -hmm. Then go ahead and write a description. Uh, basic Harry HP vocabulary from part one okay you can import from word excel google docs etc so if you have okay if you have made something in these programs you can import it we're not going to do this today now visible to everyone change this means that everybody can see your quizlet or only some classes and then you can mark your classes you have Alice's class here or users with a passport and then make a passport if you want to lock it with a passport just for a student or you now I you always put everybody I want everyone to use my uh, my set I think that's nice so I want other teachers and students to be able to use them now editable by just me if you want another person to edit it then do it i wouldn't do it i just put just me and visible to everyone here we have two things okay and we have another one you have uh, some keyboard shortcuts you're probably not going to use them but anyway and this one says flip terms and definitions so here it is you can have a definition and a term but when you do this see you flip them. So now we have a cloak and then the definition. Or we have the definition and then the term. It all depends what you want to go first. So you can change the game. Do you want to give them the definition and have them guess the concept? Or do you want to give them a concept and have them guess the definition? That's on you. Now here when you start typing, it's going to give you a lot of stuff. So in Harry Potter, we have cloak, cauldron, and we have a wand. Okay, so now... I get some words, I and mean, if you click on it, uh, it's going to uh, give you, uh, in English, it's going to give you definitions, but there are no definitions, so I'm just going to put wand and retype it. The magic stick uh, wizards use to cast spells. You can also change the language, so I think you can add Latvian. You can. You can add Latvian. So you're going to get suggestions for the Latvian language. This is good because you're making uh, you're making the database bigger. So try to search your language and, of course, search here. So you can have, oops, sorry, you can get definitions for this language. Okay. What else do we have here that's free? Let's check it out, shall we? So image. Images uh, need to be searched. You can't upload your own. Why? Well, you don't have the paid version. If you want to upload your own image, it's just going to take you to upgrade and you don't want to do this. Why? Or you just don't want to upgrade at this point. 
Uh, what else do we have? So you can search for the picture, whatever is there. Uh, when it comes to the letters, you have some options here. Oh, no, they're also graded. Wow, I didn't notice. Let me check this. Some of these things were free before. Audio, everything is paid. Yeah. So let me just see. Is there anything left that's free here? Turn off suggestions, teacher. Teacher, okay. Let's just check this one. And that one is also paid. Yep. Uh, so, so this one was free before, but it doesn't matter. So we checked. Now here, what can you do? You can move it up and down. Okay, you can just delete it. Sim simple as that. Uh, add a card. So what else do I have? Let's do one more. Uh, in Harry Potter, I have, what do I have? What do I have? Uh, uh, cast a spell. Uh -huh. Cast a spell. And the definition is to use magic to cause something to happen. I love this because it saves your time and basically gives you a definition that is made by somebody else because when people use it, as I said, you make the database bigger. This is why it would be amazing for you to use Latvian. It's going to be really, really a good idea for you. Uh, yes, okay. Now we're going to just go here. We did everything and we're just going to go to create. Now I showed you how to create your own set. Congratulations. Before we go to other tasks, here is what you can do here. So you can send it to a student via email. You can share this link. So you can share this link in the top. This one is not good. You need to share this link for, for playing. Now you can share it on Google Classroom. You can share it using Remind and you can share it on Microsoft Teams. It's immediately going to, to, to take you there. Now, we're going to create a folder. Okay, why are we creating a folder? Just to, just to make an example. So the folders here are pretty much the same as on your computer. I organize it by topic. So this folder is going to be called Harry Potter. Oops. Now, vocabulary books one, two, seven. Okay, and create a folder. Now it's going to take us to this folder, and in this folder we're going to add a set. Organize study, selves for, uh, study sets for yourself and your students. So if you're teaching another subject, you're just going to uh, organize it. For example, one topic, one unit, one folder, another unit, another folder. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to put this one, right? Or you can here immediately, you can create a new set, which is great. So if you go there, you can create a new set. This option is great because you can use class set or studied sets. You can use basically all of the sets. If you click here, you can add the sets, just the same as you did before. You can also share it. So you can share the whole folder. Again, this link, okay? Share this link, please, to your students. And also you can edit it. That's all. And delete. Now that we created a set, a folder, and now we're going to go to a class. Okay. So select the school. I'm just going to say eloquent because that's my school. Yep. Oh, I'm going to add a city. If I'm doing this, I'm just going to do this. We don't need a state. Serbia. But you don't have to do this, but I wanted to add it. Allow your students to add study sets and new members. Nope. We want this to stay private because it's a class, right? And our class name. So now we're going to, uh, to name this class Eloquent, Eloquent Readers, because it's a reading class. Enter description, a study set, set for literature. And of course, create a class. And basically, we're there. Now, let's see what can we do here. Again, you see a paid version here. We're just going to click X. We can't afford at this point to do this. Now, what can you do? You can see the number of members. You can see the number of sets. You can send an invitation link for students to join. In order for students to join, they either need to have an account of Quizlet. If they don't have it, they're going to be asked to make it when you take this test. So let's go to Incognito. You check this out, and you're going to see how it's going to look like uh, here. All Uncred readers join. Yep. And you've been invited to this class to accept the invitation, log in, or sign up for free. So the students are going to be prompted to 
join. Okay, so members, again here, we only see the class admin and sets. We're going to add a study set from Harry Potter from this, from this class, okay? And uh, what do we see here? Class progress, yes, this is, this. we're not gonna use this. And we can just remove it. In the progress again, that one's, that one's paid, sorry. Uh, we have these things left. So add members, add folders, and notifications. Uh, what are the notifications for? Okay, so let's see. What can we be notified on for free? Okay, so you can put your own photo. You have the night mode. What else do we have? Student teacher notifications. Where are notifications? Sorry. Uh, haha, here they are. Okay, study reminder. So you can send, uh, you can ask your students to activate this. Okay, and uh, whenever you add a new study set, students are going to get an email at 8 a.m. And they're going to know that you added something. Okay, that's great. You can also show your actual name or you can show your profile with Google search. If you want that, do it. I don't mind. So I'm going to go back now that I've edited the notifications mm -hmm. and do one final thing. So add folders. In this class, I'm going to add a Harry Potter folder. So now you can see here, uh, uh, you can add the sets. Or you can add folders with sets. Uh, whatever you want, actually. Uh, the thing is here, as it says, it's going to say two sets because we have one set in the folder and one set, one set here. Personally, if I'm making a class, uh, if it's a small class, then I'm just going to put the sets. If it's a big class, if I have a lot of units, I'm going to organize everything in uh, folders because it's much easier for students to access it. Okie dokie. Now that we've finished the section that deals with uh, the technical stuff, let's go here and see what we have here. A plus, when you click on the set itself, you can add it uh, to a class or a folder directly. You can edit and you can share. Now, this is important. Again, the same link. The thing that is important for us is this button. Customize. Okay, you can see the scores of all your students. What I love. Okay, I'm just going to click here. See, nobody has played it. You can see because it's a new set. You can see the top scores. Now, three dots and print. This is why a lot of people love it. Simply because you can print out flashcards super quickly. So you can save all of them. And you can do a landscape if you want to switch it like this. It looks black because my background is black. So make sure to put a white background if you want a white background to your flashcards. They're not going to be perfect. These flashcards are not going to look very nice in design. But if you're in a hurry, they're going to save your time. And what's important, your students can print them out and use them for studying automatically by themselves. So don't they don't need to ask you to do this, right? They can do this by themselves. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's see other options. Combine is cool because you can combine your sets, your folders. You can combine what other sets. So, for example, if we have seven books, Harry Potter book, we're going to want to uh, make a study set for each book. But if I want to make one final assessment, I'm going to take all of the study sets, right? And I can merge them without working too hard in one big final test. So you can do this as well. Next, we have export. What is export? Okay. So you can export it. See? And uh, what's the thing that you can do with this? When you... Oh, pardon me. Sorry. When you export, you can just copy and paste, right? And if you want to do it, uh, you can add this these concepts to your lesson plans. Uh, to the, the electronic um, attendance, or you can simply make a printed test. Just copy paste this and make a test with it if you want to print it out. Embedding is really, 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 really important. Okay. And when you click on embedding, um, this is great because it can be embedded into uh, other 
tools and you can embed it, for example, into something such as Canvas. So copy HTML code or a blog and you can embed it. And when you embed it, it's going to be interactive. Basically, it's going to look like this, right? Because I love embedding. So for me, this option is very, very, very important. Okay. Uh, let's let's see this part. Okay. Flashcards. Mm -hmm. So what do we do here? We flip and see and go next flip and see of course put a full screen there we love full screens and this is how it looks like if you do a full screen now what can we do here we have this uh sound cape so it can play audio and store this and study it separately if you have a problem with this word you can study it separately okay and you have click here to see the definition you can play how do you play it progress See progress jumps as you stick, right? Progress jumps as you stick. And you can shuffle. You can shuffle the order of the questions. So they can be in a shuffled order. Options tell you study, start. Answers return definition of vote. Start over. Audio on. If you show advanced audio options, you can see uh, the audio that can Cape. play. Now you can't see it. I'm sorry for that. Cloak. But I'm just... Pointing out, you can add the audio. In the learn section, in the learn section, you can do what? Match every term and definition correctly two times to finish. So if you match it once, it is familiar. You know this. If you match it twice, you know it well. Let's do it. The Buy magic it. stick wizard so, used to cast spells. Magic spells. sticks. Wizard used to cast spells is a do 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 do. What is it? It's a wand. Correct. A very large pot very large that is, pot used, for that's used for cooking is a cauldron. Cape. Cape is a cloak. To use mm -hmm. magic to use cause magic something to, make to happen. something to happen, cause something to happen is cast a spell. So see, now we have a familiar one. You're getting the hang of this, right? And now you want to continue. Press any key to continue. Cape. Now you're going to have them again. But now the test changes, changes, and now you have to type, which is kind of hard. So I just can't remember. Cape. Oh, what did we say for for clothing? Uh, something you wear? Don't know. Let's Cape, see. Cloak. You said cloak. Okay. All right. I was correct. The magic stick wizard is used to see. cast spells. Wand. Uh huh. A very what large pot that do? is used for A cooking. A very large pot it's used for cooking is cauldron. To okay. use magic to use cause magic something, to, cause something to, happen. to happen is cast a spell. So you do have spelling, you have writing, you have all of it here. And then they go from familiar to known well. Hmm. Uh, let's go back now. And we're going to go to, uh, to other activity. So we have write. Let's do the write one. We had the learn and now we have the write. A very large pot that uh, is used for cooking. Here, it can be a part of learn, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a separate one. Right? So you can do it this way. Mm -hmm. And it tells you how many correct and how many incorrect are remaining. Now, spell is kind of important. I love the spell one. Uh, if you're an English teacher or I think any kind of teacher, that's, uh, that's great. So let's click here to start audio autoplay. Cloak. Let me just check. Why can't we hear this? What's wrong with my audio? Cloak. 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 Mm hmm. Okay, cloak. Correct. Wand. Wand. So this is the automatic, uh, automatic uh, reading. Cauldron. Cauldron. Cast a spell. Cast a spell. Uh, if you have a long sentence, it will sound a little bit robotic, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, and you can see here just seen or whatever happened. And it goes from learned to mastered automatically. We're not going to do the, spell, the spelling until the end. We're just going to continue to the test. And here you, you see how finished is it actually. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the test section. A written question to use magic to cause something to happen. So now basically like a test is what that's a cast a spell. Uh, now you have multiple choice. Is it cast a spell, wand, and cauldron cloak? From a cape, you have a cloak. What do you see what happened here? 
it basically took your questions and just made a multiple choice questions to mix it up with other questions, which is great. True or false? Cast a spell? False. The magic stick? True. Now, what we love here is print a test. It makes an automatic test. You can print it out. Again, uh, we're going to put a portrait. So it looks like this. Uh, it does take up a lot of paper. Yep, if you want to do a test, I suggest no pictures. So if you want to do tests, uh, don't put pictures because you can print it out easily. Okay? And of course, make sure that you're not using the black background. Of course, you just can check the answers and get a grade. Now, let's give it a go and go back and do uh, the play ones. So we had the study ones and we have uh, the the play ones, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and see match. Match, okay? So let's do this. Make everything disappear. Drag corresponding items into each other to make them disappear. This is a very fast game. It's timed and uh, it's very motivating to students. Let's do it. Uh, the magic, oh, it's very, very quick, very quick. Okay, so you're just going to move to another one, and you're going to do this in the end when your students are sure, yes, and you can play again. You got to first and have unlocked the match ba uh, ba uh, badge. So basically, your students get badges inside, which is, again, you know, very, uh, very nice because students are motivated by digital badges. Then we're going to go to Gravity. That's another game which I really, really like. This one is crazy. I love it. And again, it's timed. Protect the planets from incoming asteroids. So we're going to do an uh, answer with definition, term. I suggest you answer with the term because it's shorter, right? Let's go. Okay, start the game. Watch out for red asteroids. If you miss a term twice, they will destroy your planet. Let's do it. So cape, hello. Ah! Okay, quickly. Is magical something to happen is cast a Spell. Great. Oh, uh, there's lots for cooking cauldron. Mm -hmm. Want. So I was fast. And when you put all of them, they kind of start reappearing, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's uh, let's let it destroy us. It's kind of slow. You can make it faster, depending on what you're doing. So we're going to let this one. Kill us, and then we can see it's going to tell us that we are um, there. Correct answer, cloak. Yes, copy answer. So basically, it's going to let you, it's going to show you what's the wrong one. Okay, you can restart it and play it again. Again, very great, very competitive, and we love it. The last but not least one is live. The live, yes, it needs to have six unique terms. Sorry, we have four. So let's go and add some terms, okay? We have to add six in order to play the live uh, quiz. So cast the spell, wizard. I'm gonna add a wizard. Uh -huh. Wizard is a person who practices magic, okay? We're gonna put an image, why not? And then go to another witch, which is kind of the same. We just want to add, oh, we just want to add, yes, possessive powers. Yes, yes, maybe. Let's just do it. It doesn't have to be <laughs> this way, but uh, let's just do it, shall we? Okay, done. Now I have six terms. We can go back and do the light one. The light one is important because you're going to do it, or you can do it with your class. Okay, a competitive and collaborative classroom game to improve learning and student engagement. So, let's watch how does it look like. Meet Quizlet Live, the easy to use classroom game that blends competition and collaboration to engage every student in learning. Quizlet Live groups students into teams that must work together to win. While teams are prompted with the same set of questions, each teammate sees different possible answers, and only one person per team has the match. 
students need to communicate to choose the correct answer and move forward in the game. As they play, the teacher's screen acts as an interactive leaderboard, tracking each team's progress and adding fire to the competition. If a team answers incorrectly, they go all the way back to the start, so choosing simply for speed won't work. Instead, the stronger their teamwork, the faster they'll go. And the first team to correctly answer all questions in a row wins. When the game ends, the teacher can lead a class review or easily start a new round to give students another chance at glory. To play, you'll need an internet connection, one device per student, a teacher-controlled computer, and a way to project. Start by logging into your Quizlet account and choosing a study set. Select Live to generate a game code, then project your screen so your class can see. Have students open the Quizlet app or go to quizlet.live in their browser. After they enter the code, they can add their name to join the game. Everyone in? Your students will be instantly grouped into teams. If possible, ask them to get up to sit with their teammates. When they're settled, start the game and let the fun begin. Quizlet Live. Competition, collaboration, ultimate student engagement. Free for all teachers on Quizlet. So you've just seen how does it look. Okay, uh, the students need to install the app on their phones. We're not going to do it here because we don't have students. Uh, this is just me explaining. And this is why I showed you the video. So the students need to install the app and then they're all going to play in groups at the same time and the group for the most correct answers wins. So we can just click on get started and see what can we do here. Individuals, the students can play the game on their own. So they can play alone, okay? Each student for themselves. Or you can place the students into random teams, right? Okay, so like the combination of questions and answers you would like your students to see. So you can see definition and term, and term and definition, I want both. with your students okay so my ladies and gentlemen that was quizlet thank you for watching the video uh, when you start working on your um quizzes uh and your study sets my suggestion is that you think in which section of the lesson can you use it and how i'm quickly going to tell you a few things that you can do and how do i use it number one how do I use Quizlet? I use Quizlet to introduce new vocabulary. If you are a teacher that is using a Quizlet in a language classroom, then it's easier for you. If you're a subject teacher, then you can include, you can include other things uh, such as concepts. Of course, I use it in the introduction, but I also use it for to give them homework practice. I use it to give them uh, tasks to revise before an actual test and I also use it not just for for testing and assessment I use it for brainstorming so I use it for prediction for example we just started we didn't cover any concepts the students don't know what it is so we are going to go go through the sets and see can you guess can you guess before we even studied what are we going to talk about what's the topic of the lesson uh do you know all of the vocabulary? Which one you don't know? Why? Can you go ahead, uh, do some exploration, Google online, come back and try to do the test again? So basically, you can use it in many other ways, all depending on which part of the lesson, uh, what's the outcome, and what subject are you teaching. Again, thank you for, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.